This is how I painted up my Hysterians from Mantic Games. Okay, so I picked up the Hysterian Faction Starter. Um, the Hysterians weren't... Uh, one of my staples that I played Dead Zone with. You know, I've been playing a lot of other things. I have some Kalishi, some uh, some of the stuff that I got from the Kickstarter, but I was like, it's time to get this moving, get some Asterians in here. So what I did was, uh, when I was thinking about a color scheme, I remembered the Guavian Death Gang. I liked the way they looked, that red reflective armor, very shiny, and I wanted to put that on the Asterians. I think it would be a great look for the Asterians. So what I did was I started experimenting with some uh, different color schemes. This is what I came up with, and I hope you enjoy what I did. All right, so I primed the models in black, and I'm just hitting them with some Badger Silver from the Stino Res. I really like the way the silver looks. Uh, I'm really learning to take my time. I don't want to rush this because I noticed that when I rush it, it comes out like garbage. So really take your time, especially with the airbrush. All right, next what I do is I come in with a lighter silver just from the top at a 45 degree angle, just to give it a little variation. All right, this is something new that I started doing. I take Null Oil and what I did was I just slathered it all over the place, you know, getting it in the crevices and stuff, knowing that this is going to be the undercoat for the, uh, the red covering that goes on it. I think the main thing was on the panels and things, things closest to the top. You don't want to have it pooling on there. You want to get all that stuff out of there. I wasn't too worried about the guns because we were going to paint them a different color. All right, so then after this, I took some light silver and I just started dry brushing. Um, I, I used the silver, but honestly, uh, after this model, I started using white, and it came out a little better, but it's basically the same process. I think the white would show up better. It, it did show up better through the red. There it goes, not looking too bad. So the next step was to take some of this Tamiya X27 red and you gotta add a little bit of thinner to it because it's not water based so it's important to use this and what I did was uh, I, you fill up the lip of the X27, all, all of these uh, clear coats and it worked but then I put one or two drops in the airbrush with it. This really took a while because when you're putting the coat on you don't really see it. So if you can see here, um, I'm, I'm doing nice, easy, taking my time, little by little, pulling the trigger back, just a little bit of paint coming out. But the thing is, it doesn't look like you're painting it. And I was so tempted to just pull back on the trigger and let it all go. But using my paint discipline, I had to get it because I wanted this to come out right. So just a little bit at a time, taking my time, getting it done right. So here we go. Now you see the second coat starts to really, um, you start to really see it. So it really took, to, to get it the way I wanted, it took about three coats. But what I'm happy is, is that uh, the stuff underneath is showing through. Here we go with the third coat. The third coat basically is uh, 
the first two coats kind of fill in the crevices, and then the third coat is your glamour coat, the, the coat that everyone's going to see, you know, the, the final product, if you will. And as you can see, it really starts to come together. And it's important to hit all the spots that you missed. But if you start to look, you can kind of see now the dry brushing, the you know heavy, heavy dry brushing, and the wash, and then the silver underneath is actually showing through pretty good. Let it dry for a little bit, and it looks pretty good. I I, I really was happy the way it came out. Next, it was time to do my black talon. I didn't want to do him red because he's a black talon, but I didn't want to do him black. So what I did was I took the uh, Tamiya Color Smoke, and this is one of my favorite things. I use this on a lot of things. Um, same difference. I put a little bit of the thinner in there. It's the Tamiya X20A thinner, and you see I had it, I had it in the bottle ready to go. It's very important to thin this down because then it won't, it won't go through the brush really good. Same thing, same applied to... The first model, the marionette model with the red, I'm doing the same thing with the smoke. Uh, I'm not too worried about getting it on the gun because I am going to cover it on the gun. Now, the difference between the Tamiya clears and, let's say, the ghost tints from Badger, which, don't get me wrong, I love the ghost tints from Badger, is that these, once they dry, they take paint to go on top of them well. So if you overspray or you make a mistake... It's okay. It's a little bit more forgiving than, say, the ghost tint. The ghost tint also, you need about a day for it to completely dry, and then you put another few coats on. With this, I put it in the fan, and I let it go, and it really came out well. You know, I was really happy with it. Um, I gave it about 15 minutes to dry, even with the, uh, the little hobby fan that I have, because I wanted it completely dry. I didn't want any fingertips, uh, fingerprints, or any scratches or anything when I was done. Same as before, really taking my time, uh, using some discipline, not to over, over, you know, over spray these these guys. All right, so let's start with the guns. I use a little Brion Blue, or Brioni Blue from uh, Reaper Master. I, I really like this color. So here's my thought process. A totally different gun. Now, with the black talon, or I'm calling it my smoke talon, uh, I wanted to keep the guns the same. And it, it, it's all right, but you'll see with the red, um, it, it really stands out. I was thinking with this, um, sticking with my Guavian Death Gang theme, I wanted to do a little bit of a Tron-looking gun. So now, I'm taking this... Uh, Conella green shade or Colella green shade. I don't, I don't know the exact way to say it. It's a dark, dark green, and it goes over the blue, and it gives it a kind of a bluish, greenish tint, which I really did like. So next, what I did was I take the LED blue, same from Reaper again, and what I like about the, this is it's it's a very bright blue. So now you have a dark muted bluish green and you're going to put this on so like I said getting into the uh, getting into the like Tron glowing type of uh, deal and also you see I'm using a wet palette I, I, I never use the wet palette but I got to tell you man I, I'm, I'm happy about it uh, I put the paint you know that's the one I bought I have some cooking nonstick cooking paper and just some water on it and it really does, when you're painting, especially with these small brushes, because of the, you know, it, it dries so quick, especially with those small bristles. So, you know, it's, it's important to have that, that the paint doesn't dry. So now what I'm doing here is I'm just hitting, I just want to hit a few. And I, what I noticed was I, I, I tended, used to really paint a lot of it overdue. I would have did every line highlight. But what I did was I picked about three on each side. And just went over it a little bit because 
with this a little less is more and you'll see what I mean when I'm done so just hitting the tops just just the the highest points using the side of the side of the bristles just to get that paint on there All right, so now it's time for a glow. All right, so we're going to start off with jade green. All right, so I was thinking complimentary cold to red is green, but I didn't want to make them look like the Christmas hysterians. So, you know, we're going to make a glow here. And I did it without the airbrush because uh, I wanted to do it, you know, mostly airbrush, but now with this, hitting it with the, with the brush, the regular brush. So there's four spots, obviously the power coming from the top, and then the power cells on the side, I guess that's where the energy will travel down on the gun, and then obviously coming out of the gun barrel, you know, you're going to get hit with the Asterion's green power light that's coming out of it. And with this I use two brushes, you know, for the different size, you know, you know the right tool for the right uh, job. So this is the darker green, and you know, I was happy with it, so I got it where I wanted. So here's here's the base. Next I went with pale green, same thing from Reaper. This is gonna do most of the shine. This is where most of the shine is gonna come through. So I'm just gonna kinda go over, leaving a little bit of the previous green there to, you know, that's that's your undercoat, and this is gonna be the glowing part. I had a tendency to always cover up so much, so I put a nice little base coat down and then I would cover it up with the second color and you never see it. So with this, I tried to just, as it was glowing, I wanted to go from dark at the bottom and lighter at the top. So once that was done, now we use a little Waywatcher Green Glaze, a little bit of that GW stuff. And as I'm filling it in, I wanted to kind of cover everything but in the creases it would settle and the same process uh, I don't know why I didn't tape it but I did it for the the glowing eye and with this I don't mind if it goes into that that deep recess because it's gonna be the glowing part of it and I had to apply you know I would let it dry you know it dries pretty quick but then I put about two, sometimes three, depending on what it was, when I got it to a point where I was happy. Next is the moth green. And this is your brightest color of green. With this, very little, just did a dot, hit it, boom. That was it, get out of there. Same thing on the barrel. And then for the power cells, you could put a little bit more went with a smaller brush. And I just went like, this is the top part. Just, just want to get it, you know, so it looks like it's glowing. All right, so now what I'm doing is using a little Lamenter's yellow. It's the glaze. And I just want to put it in a few spots, very small. Because I found that with the green and yellow, this really gives it a nice little, a nice little kick. And that little glow, it's, it's a little green and yellow glow, giving it a little lighter effect. So now, here's the rest of the guys. Alright, starting off with it, the same thing. Because I went, basically I batch painted this, I wanted to get it all done. There's my silver with the dry brushing. And there's the red. Okay, and you can see the black talon already. So now, you know, there he is, the marionette uh, prime. And I wanted to put these guys on super duper bases. So what I did was, now that I have a 3D printer, uh, I looked around and I found these bases on Thingiverse. I'll uh, give you a link to it down below because I really do like these bases. And some people like clear bases. I don't know, I like to do bases. So here we go. 
It'll put them on the turntable. I can show you what happened. Um, I'm pretty happy with these. Now, by no means am I a pro painter. I don't feel that I'm a, a great painter, but this is the way I did it. And as you know, it's been scientifically proven that when you have painted models, they roll better on the table. So, you know, there's a look at the, uh, the 3D printed base. You put a little bit of uh, hazard stripes in there and I was just happy the way it went. And here's my Guavian Death Gang. These guys are my inspiration for this thing. A little bit of glow. These are the troops, the marionette troops. And this is the overhead shot. Uh, there's the bases. I really was very happy to stumble upon these bases on Thingiverse. Um, I, I, I love printing them up and being able to put the exact ones I want. Next is the ciphers. Uh, more troops filling out the ranks here. Take an overhead shot too. And here are some of the newer troops, the Cypher Wardens. Um, I really do like these guys. I want to play them a lot more. I think I'm going to get the booster so I can get a few more of these guys. I do have the Dreadball MVP to use, but uh, yeah, I, I, these guys have more of a uh, fighting style. They look like hand-to-hand -hand combat guys, which uh, which they are in the game. Here's our overhead. I don't know, the one on the left, I feel like he popped out of that uh, hatch and, you know, jumped up and ha-ha. Alright, let's move on to the specialists. Here we go. This is the Marionette specialists with all different guns, sniper rifle, phlogister, and I think this is the grenade launcher, you know. I'm a little upset that they didn't come with the light missile launcher because that's what I really like to uh, to arm these guys with, so I'm going to have to proxy if I do that. And here he is, my smoke talent, not black talent, smoke talent. Uh, I wanted to put him on a base because I didn't want to have what everybody else has. I wanted to customize a little bit. So instead of having him leaping on that uh, rubble like everybody else has, you'll see here that he's standing on the on the base. I would have liked to have him moving forward a little bit. But all in all, happy with this. So guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Uh, we really appreciate it. I want to thank our Patreon subscribers. They're the guys who really make this happen. And uh, why don't you click on one of the links above. Check out some of our other videos. And if you like this, why don't you subscribe for more Dead Zone and hobby goodness. But till next time, take care.